What's up, sports bettors? Alex here, and lines are on the move. You can see line movements highlighted right here, Northwestern moving from minus 155 to minus 165 on DraftKings. So line movements are highlighted in green and red on the odds jam screen. And what I'm going to be sharing with you is just a ton of good bets. Okay, so we'll get into it. We can just start out right away. The first play I ended up going with is SMU minus 125. I hit it for $1,250. And we can go through kind of the strategy, the math. But one thing I do want to say is there's a lot of ways to slice the data. There's a lot of ways to make money sports betting. So I actually, you know, and I ride with you guys on all these plays. I also like to say that like three-fourths of the industry when I started out betting on sports, maybe even like 95%, I'm not sure. I don't even show you their bet slips. So everything I bet, wins, losses, I ride with you guys on all these plays. But I wrote an article this morning, you know, so I'll be, I'm going to try to 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 really focus on also writing content as opposed to, um, you know, just creating YouTube videos. But you'll see there's an article called, you know, Confidence in Sports Betting. So what this article essentially discusses is just um, how to think about, you know, how confident you are that a bet is good. And also think about how do sports books make money, right? So once you understand how sports books make money, which is just they charge the vig, they charge the juice, it becomes a lot less scary, right? Sports books charge a four to five percent spread. They all set lines independently. So essentially you have like a hundred different people or a hundred different, you know, exchanges all trying to set prices on the same thing. So in this case, it's SMU money line. You know, in the same way there's a price for Bitcoin, in sports betting, there's like freaking, you know, a hundred, hundreds of different prices of SMU. On BetMGM, you can buy SMU for minus 150. On FanDuel, it's minus 142. On Caesar Sportsbook, it's minus 140. So we use all this data in the market to kind of try to tease out where there's value. And the play I found right here is SMU minus 125. We're getting clear value. No other bookmaker is giving us better than minus 132. So I look at all this data in the market. I treat every sports book as kind of a, an independent data point of where the line should be set. And I try to determine, yeah, do I think minus 125 is a price where I'm beating the VIG, beating the juice? And what you're going to notice is Bet Online, a very sharp offshore sports book, has this minus 145. Bet US, another offshore sports book, has this minus 155. Bodog Bovada, minus 150. So this is an arbitrage bet, right? These are arbitrage bets. Pinnacle, sharpest bookmaker in the world, most efficient betting market, minus 140. So kind of looking at all the data, treating every sports book as a data point of where the line should be set, it's pretty clear there's a ton of value on SMU. So that's the first play I locked in. SMU money line. Next play I ended up going with is the Nets, minus eight and a half. So I'll have to log back in, or I guess I have it up right here. So I took the Nets minus eight and a half. Again, similar reason. Like when I say confidence, it's like very tight market width, right? These are all things we want. On Pinnacle, only 11 cents in market width. Stake, it's not available in the US, but you can see I like to look at every sportsbook's odds. So I took a slightly worse price because it's not in my location. And I still think this bet is really good. But typically, you know, I recommend not doing that. <laughs> You know, unless it's, unless you're very confident the play is good, um, just because, you know, it feels a little crappy to bet this at plus 110 when I know there's another bookie, Stake, giving plus 113. But I don't consider Stake to be smart at all with the way they set their lines, and it's pretty clear that plus 110 is a value play. So I ended up locking this in as well. DraftKings, you know, you can see most other books aren't even giving you plus money, plus 110 on Betway for a pretty tight market, right? A pretty big, efficient betting market. Absolutely um, worth playing, in my opinion. So I locked that in. And, you know, yesterday I opened up my Betway account in Virginia and every play I gave out here or I gave it out on Twitter. I think most of them were YouTube, um, but I will give out some plays on Twitter if I don't have time to do a YouTube video. We won DeRozan. We won all three of our two leg parlays. And then we won Murray, DeJounte Murray under. So we crushed it on Betway. If you watch the YouTube videos yesterday, <laughs> um, absolutely crushed it. So the final play I went with is a, or this, is, this actually isn't the final play. The next play I went with is a three-leg parlay, 1,000 bucks. 
plus 709 odds. But what's cool about WinBet is when you place a parlay, uh, they give you kind of like a reward because they're trying to incentivize sports bettors to place parlays. And in this case, it was a 5% odds boost. So I'm getting plus 745 here. All plays, just plus EV. Again, finding value. Once you understand, you know, and I really do think you guys will enjoy this article, you know, once you understand how sportsbooks work, how they set parlay odds, how they make money, all you have to do is like, the way I view it is for all the sportsbooks I'm looking at, so in this case, I just set it to win bet because I saw there were some plays available, um, is, you know, you look for those rare few betting opportunities, those 1%, you know, 0.1%, whatever it is on a given sportsbook of betting opportunities that are actually pr profitable. You know, like if we look at WinBet, there's legitimately probably, what, 40,000 odds on this site, 40,000 different things you can bet if you consider all sports. You got the quarter markets, you got the first halves. They'll probably post player props here in a bit for the NBA games tonight. Then they have their alternate lines. Then they have their game props, right? So sportsbooks have the advantage on us that they charge a spread. They charge the VIG. But essentially, out of the millions of odds across sports books, they screw up occasionally, right? And we're able to find plays with value that beat the VIG, beat the juice, and it's only possible because sports books have different odds. So here we can see on WinBet, we're getting plus 140. Five dimes only giving you plus 132. Barstool, like you can basically, you look at all these sports books and it becomes pretty clear we like plus 140. Wichita State, arbitrage bet to DraftKings, kind of talked about in this um, confidence article. And then the final play I took is Ohio State um, on the money line. No other sports book giving us better than minus 177. So sure, the EV percentage is a little lower, but we have really high confidence that this play is good because just looking across the market, there's like no disagreement. You know, FanDuel saying it's minus 182, Caesars minus 170. So when I talk about confidence, that's what I mean. Like I literally, you know, oftentimes we'll just quickly scroll through all these books and just be like, are we getting a clear market outlier where I'm clearly beating the vague, beating the juice? So like another thing you can do um, is use this no vague odds calculator. I consider this to be the most important calculator on odds jam. And you can put in every sports books market and be like, okay, Am I beating the true line with the VIG removed, right? So FanDuel has Grand Canyon minus 152. They have this Iowa team plus 126. I don't know anything about the teams. Take the sports out of sports betting, follow the numbers. So here you can see on FanDuel, they're saying, okay, you have to bet 152 to win 100 on Grand Canyon. You can bet 100 to win 126 on Northern Iowa. That's a market with a spread, with VIG, right? Sportsbooks are car dealers. They buy cars for $10,000, they sell them for $15,000. They charge a spread. When you go to the car dealer and he tells you he'll buy your used car for $10,000, it's because he thinks it's worth more than $10,000. He thinks he can sell it for more. Same thing with sports books, right? So what you want to do is remove that spread. So what this does is it says, okay, these are equal and opposite outcomes. One of these two teams has to win. And with the VIG removed, it would be plus 136 as the true odds, according to FanDuel, for Northern Iowa. We're getting plus 140 in our parlay. So we're getting better odds than the fair odds, the true odds, the odds with the VIG removed. You know, it's kind of like if you had a car dealer, if you sell him your car for 10000 and then he goes and he sells it for 15000 it's like, okay, he probably thought it was worth somewhere in the middle, maybe like 12.5 k because he bought it from me for $10,000, then he sold it for $15,000. Same thing in sports betting. You want to remove that spread to figure out the fair price. So you can do the same thing for Caesar Sportsbook, right? Plus 130, minus 150. What do they think the fair line is? Plus 138, we're getting improvement. Now to Unibet, this play looks incredible, right? They're more bullish on this Northern Iowa team. So there's always little discrepancies in the market. So here we're crushing it. You know, we're getting plus 140 on win bet. Unibet thinks the true odds are plus 126. So you can do that for every sports book. You know, Pinnacle is the sharpest bookmaker in the world. So we want to put more weight into their odds. So if we do that, it's like, okay, according to Pinnacle, the true line is plus 132, you know? So we're clearly getting value there as well. 
So we use all this data in the market and it's pretty clear that plus 140 is a great price and a price we want to be on. Um, and then same for the other plays. So that's my parlay. And then finally, I say this all the time, but the arbitrage tool is pretty valuable for finding EV plays because whenever you have arbitrage, you know, the definition of arbitrage bets are you can place a bet on equal and opposite outcomes because sportsbooks have different odds. This is all only possible because sportsbooks have different odds, right? So you can, you essentially have this like fragmented market. It's like having a hundred different prices for Bitcoin and you're trying to figure out what the price should actually be. You know, every sports book is an independent data point of where the line should be set. We use all this data to figure out where the line should be set. And then we make money. You know, we find plays with an edge. And what people don't realize, right, is this is an arbitrage, you know. If you don't know what it is, you can watch this little tutorial video. It's, it's worth watching, I think. Or you can do this little, like, quick start wizard thing. But what I was going to say is, like, this is risk-free money, arbitrage. You have to hustle, you have to be fast, you're day trading, lines can move, you know, but it's risk-free money. So if we like placed this over and this under, we would make a risk-free return of 2%. So basically, let's say you started out arbing with $5,000. If you did 2% a day, that's a 60% ROI. Your bankroll would increase to, you know, 8K the next month if you were arbing your bankroll every day. So like it's, you know, it's risk-free money. It's a 2% risk-free return. But what it more signifies, you know, to EV betters like myself is, hey, whenever arbitrage exists, we know there has to be a profitable bet. You know, if risk-free money exists, there's a profitable bet. Um, and EV betting is more profitable than arbitrage. We have some like articles about it and stuff like that. But it's the same thing here, right? It's the same thing with EV betting. This game starts in three hours. It's going to be over in like six hours, a fourth of a day. We're earning a 2.5% return on capital in six hours. The stock market returns 8% a year. We're getting 2.5% in six hours, right? If you actually have an edge in sports betting, that's why it's very powerful because those ROIs compound very quickly, you know? So let's continue to go through. Um, and the market's always moving. I say that all the time too. Like you may have different sports books. I'm currently in Virginia, so I have WinBet. So I place my bet on WinBet. Sometimes I'm not in a state with WinBet, so I don't have bets on WinBet. You know, or sometimes like some of these sports books, I don't even have an account for yet, like Golden Nugget. So it's not that I don't think there's any good plays on there. It's just I'm not sure. And the market's always moving. So the final play I went with, long story short, is this under 140 half on FanDuel. So if we click into the odds, we're using Odds Jam to find these line discrepancies. Pinnacle's the only one with these alternate markets. And what you're going to notice is like, whoa, every sports book has the line two points lower. So we got insane value, a play that, a play that beats the big. So here it is. My play's right here, under 140 half. And I say this all, and here are my, you know, four bets for today. Um, so we have the parlay, and then we have these three plays, right? And then for the two plays, the non, you know, parlay, and then the non-arbitrage, or the not the bet we found on the arbitrage page. So this is the return if you arbed it, but our return is actually going to be higher. But um, what I was going to say is like, you know, this play, for example, if you take the profit margin, so the profit margin of that SMU money line was 1.68%. We put 1250 on it. So our profit margin in dollars, you just multiply those numbers together is 21 bucks, right? You take your edge or your EV percentage and you multiply it by your stake. And again, this is just like rational sports betting. You know, sports books make money by charging the big. They all set lines independently. So you take the sports out of it. You become a day trader and investor. You hunt for value. And you find plays like this Northern Iowa one, which is incredible. Incredible. So anyways, let's make some freaking money.